It's now day 70 of this lockdown and I think from my hair you can tell that. Now typically in the office I have my DSLR camera set up with a microphone and it's much easier to do a, a professional looking video there than it is from the home. I'm trying to use my Surface web camera which wasn't giving a good quality uh, picture, doing it through Zoom and I've now uh, actually gone out and bought a new webcam, wait for it to arrive the last few days. It has finally arrived which means this video which has been a couple of days in the planning can now be done uh, with a better quality than I would have done with the uh, the Surface. Now you will see, of course, it's a bit of a mess here. I do apologise for that. You may see a cat wander past. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, let's get into this video. It is 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 26th of October 2021. My name is Aaron Hunt, I'm a partner of the law firm Stace Hammond and I head up the immigration team there. As always, this is not legal advice, this is just our commentary on immigration here in New Zealand. If you're looking for legal advice, please get in contact at the address in the description down below. And please remember to like and subscribe um, if you haven't already. Those things really do help tell uh, the YouTube gurus to push this video out to a larger audience. Now on Friday last week there was a small announcement which didn't really get much coverage and to be fair we can understand why the Ministry of Education or the MOE, I'm going to refer to it today because Ministry of Education again and again just gets annoying, so the MOE uh, announced that a thousand students would be eligible for visas to enter New Zealand. Um, however there was a lot of conditions and it isn't really an open playing field so let's get through what we do know uh, and we'll link to the MOE page in the description below so you can see where we're sort of getting the information from. Now, of the 1,000 uh, students, 400 will be pilot trainees. As in the world where so many airlines have laid off pilots, of course, we need to be training 400 more pilots. So I think it's a sarcasm there. It's a bit of a strange choice, I think, to choose 400 uh, trainees to be of that 1,000, but that is the choice they've made. Now, of the remaining 600, there'll be 300 at degree level and 300 at sub-degree level. Now, by degree level, we're assuming that also means post-degree level. So those of you who are looking at doing uh, postgraduate, I assume you're falling into that category. It isn't really um, clear. Of course, you'll be wondering as to who the 600 will be. Uh, well, that will be up to the education providers, allegedly. Um, you'll let your, your provider know that you want to study. They will then let the MOE know um, the nominations, and the MOE will confirm those a month later, which will be eligible. How will they decide which 300 of each of those groups are chosen? That isn't made clear, though it is in line with other government um, immigration policies. Um, so far, and we'll come to that later in this video. So there is a timetable, um, October 2021, so this, this month, there is an allocation of places and criteria for nominations um, being provided. It looks like these allocations aren't public knowledge and neither is the criteria for the nominations. So while the, the ministry suggests that people don't apply for multiple institutions, without knowing how many each of those institutions are going to be getting, um, and the possible um, courses who again you know, to get them, it's sort of hard to know which one to apply for. Though to be fair with the number of institutions there are, the number of possible courses, the, you know, your chance of getting one, unless you're, you're actually going to be a pilot, your chances are practically zero. Um, this is 600 across tens of thousands of students. Um, it's a very, very small number. So that's October. Now, November 2021, the education providers will let the potential students know they, have a, they are potential students. Uh, and then December 2021, they'll open the nominations up with the, um, the MOE. So it appears that the MOE has some level of selection in the process when ideally we believe it should be with the education providers. In January 2022, the um, students who are successful can be told and can begin applying for a visa with the first to students arriving in March 2022 and we say maybe they're arriving in March 2022. We'll come to that uh, in a moment. There are of course requirements. You need to have an offer of a place which should be confirmed uh, by the provider when of course they nominate you to the MOE. You need to be fully vaccinated with an approved vaccine. Now, this is actually a requirement that comes into effect in five days' time. They have a link on the uh, MIQ pages as to what the approved vaccines are. They say there's 22 approved vaccines, but the link now shows 23 vaccines. Now, the way to get um, on this approved list is that the vaccine has to be an approved vaccine in a country of the world. So it is a very broad um, way of approval. 
where there is yeah, 23 approved vaccines. The other requirement is that you must have had your most recent vaccination or the only vaccination if it's just a one vaccine uh, vaccine um, at least 14 days previously. Um, so it can't have been a recent vaccination. You must have given it time to take effect. Uh, you just need to provide a, uh, a digital vaccine passport or another form of electronic or paper documentation to show that you have been vaccinated. So if it's anything like New Zealand, you'll get the little piece of cardboard. Other countries will have had some sort of electronic passport in place, which you'll need to be able to show that you have um, that vaccine. Um, you need to show at least $20,000 annually in, uh, in the living costs or 1667 per month if your study is less than 36 weeks. Now this is an increase we actually saw last year from 15,000 to 20,000 uh, when they started bringing in some students who had already uh, started their studies in New Zealand. And we know there's been a number of complaints about this increase online that seems to have been um, targeted at those who are offshore, of course, just as the timing of it. But the old $15,000 requirement was actually in place since 26th of March 2012. So it has been uh, nine, and a, nine and a half years since it was last increased. So this isn't so much a, a cash grab by immigration, well they don't get the money. Um, it is just to make sure that there is enough funds there because the cost of living in New Zealand of course has gone up with inflation and other pressures in that past nine and a half years. Now looking actually at inflation, that 15,000 from uh, March 2012, so first quarter 2012, is now 17 and a half thousand or so uh, in about now quarter three 2021. Um, so they've rounded it up to 20,000 from 17 and a half, so it is sort of, you know, it's still an increase, perhaps not as much as they've said, um, but that is the figure they have now gone with. Now on top of the 20,000 you also need to have um, a MIQ spot and pay for it. Uh, but we do expect MIQ to change drastically between now and March 2022. Now, it's actually mentioned today that um, home isolation will be an option from January next year uh, for those who are fully vaccinated. Um, of course, that's still no detail yet in that. That was just a comment made by um, Deputy Prime Minister Grant Robertson. There is also an allowance for the education providers to be able to pay some or all of the MIQ cost. So there is perhaps some idea there that MIQ costs will come down because that cost may be, uh, for, for a provider, it may be that you can do the, that um, MIQ in one of their halls of residence and they've been paying to do it for a long time. That may open up as an option to them, allowing them to handle the MIQ for you. Um, but of course, it, it does. If nothing, nothing changes and if it stays the same as it is currently, then getting an MIQ spot is going to be difficult um, because as we've seen it, it is, you get sort of a, maybe a 1 in 10 or 1 in 12 chance at an MIQ spot when you uh, try to get one. Strangely, the website for the uh, MOE states that MIQ spots in December and January are only open to citizens' residents, which isn't uh, correct because we have seen people on work visas who have the border exception uh, getting those slots. So that could just be someone at the MOE who doesn't quite understand how MIQ works, which they're writing the instructional page is a little bit scary. Um, the person has to be ready to travel between March and July 2022 because the first visas will come out in March at the earliest and they this is looking to be for those who want to start studying from the middle of 2022. So if you get into the country sort of in June, July, you are here in time to do that uh, start at that next semester. Uh, and of course you, you need to be able to access flights. You must be able to fly from wherever you are to New Zealand either directly or via some sort of pathway that you can make use of. Um, and it strangely mentions the need to demonstrate English com competency, um, though this doesn't usually form part of the immigration process, it's something that is done by the education provider um, in conjunction with the NZQA. So that was a perhaps a gain distrust by somebody who isn't actually aware uh, of the complete process. Um, there are some other smaller requirements, uh, which you can see on the page, but those are the main requirements. But that's about all we know so far. We haven't got a lot of information that uh, would be nice to have, like this criteria that they're looking at, this nomination criteria, um, how the allocations have been done, whether they've been done uh, per university, per course, uh, or whether it's going to be basically apply and we'll sort of we'll know who, who we're going to give them to, but we're not going to tell you in advance. It's would be nice to have more clarity on this. Um, now, apart from being a tiny number, because 600 is split across all of those disciplines, all those providers, all those levels of education, 
there it's it's a tiny number to who's actually going to come through there is no clarity about nominations allocation of places will the moe be directing where these are going to go do they have some sort of list as to how they're going to divide it up is it going to be uh, based perhaps on country of origin or is there going to be some other factors involved or will it basically just be a random selection we're going to let you put nominations in we're going to run a random number generator and they got the guys who are selected get the slot that would be the fairest way to do it um, but we'll have to try and get more information as to how that is going to work we've seen a number of border exceptions that appear to have been fine-tuned to provide assistance to other ministries or government departments but not the general public and companies uh, we saw it with so many investors able to come to New Zealand only if they were chosen by NZ Trade and Enterprise, so government prep projects. We saw it with the new one-off residence visa with this list of primary industry scarcities that nobody seems to be able to explain why the roles in the list were chosen, including at least one role that had gone from being on the oversupply list but was now called a scarcity. Uh, we also had it with the other critical worker exceptions uh, that seem to have largely gone to athletes and entertainers coming to New Zealand for government endorsed projects and events and for very short time periods, uh, missing out on people who may have been coming here for the longer term, um, providing skills much needed by companies, but not so much by government departments. Now we have the MOE appearing to choose who gets these nominated slots with little clarity as to the process of the selection. It just seems like immigration policies that appear to be there for the public, but actually are there to be used by the government ministries and departments. Um, and outside of the, the, the general public's reach. Um, but that is all we know so far. We will keep an eye on this, um, but honestly, at the moment, our main focus continues to be waiting for that uh, set of rules for the one-off uh, Section 6 residence or S6 residence visas, which will hopefully come through in the next few days. We'll be covering that in detail when that does. Uh, if more comes through about those student visas, we will be covering in a future video or um, give you updates on what is happening and whether we hear any more confirmation about our questions. Um, but until then, kia kaha and stay safe.